Hey artists, today we're making these amazing batik buildings. Follow along with me and I'll show you all the steps to create your own amazing batik. The first thing I want to do is go ahead and start sketching out some tall buildings that are really close together. We see that a lot in New York or San Francisco. Uh, we saw that in some examples in Europe, places like Poland. So we're kind of like a tall, thin type of building. I'm going to draw a line down here to show my sidewalk down below. So I got my sidewalk line here. And then I'm going to put my first building kind of in the center and move away as I go. So I'm going to go up very tall, over and back down. Some people like to use a ruler for this, and that is totally fine. I am just kind of freehanding it. So I'm going to add a little roof to that. And I might put, you know, one of those fun little, I like a deck up here for people to stand out and look out on the patio. So I'm putting like the little lines of the fence. Perfect. Okay, and then I'm going to put another building over here. Have that gone go right off the page. Might add building right here. And then I'll put in a tall, skinny building back behind this one. Perfect. So now that I have the outlines of those buildings, then I can start adding some details. I don't want to go too crazy with the details because I have to cover everything in a thick layer of crayon. So I don't want to make it too difficult for myself, but I will go ahead and make sure that every building has a door. So there's a door here. And we'll give this building, we'll give this guy a round door. And I'll put a little door over here. And I can also go ahead and start adding in some windows. And so you're just going to go through and add windows and doors to every single part of your building. This one might have a little attic window up here. So just kind of add those windows and doors to each of your buildings. All right, with pencil, I went ahead and added doors to each building, windows. I added some little details that I saw in the pictures, like a little window trellis and the little wood lines in the windows and doorknobs and things like that. So now that I have a fully finished uh, drawing, it's time to add crayon. The most important thing here is that when you are adding the crayon that you're pushing hard enough to get rid of most of the white space. So I've had some people that'll color and it looks really nice when you color real light like that, but unfortunately that doesn't put enough wax on the paper for the resist. So you're gonna have to push a little bit harder. Now, that doesn't mean you have to push so hard that there's no white space at all, because that might take you a really long time, but just make sure that you are pushing enough that most of the white space is gone. So you can see I kind of outline it and then go back and I'm just going around. Now, you're gonna color every building some kind of color with crayon. If you would like, something to be white. You're gonna have to use a white crayon. So if I made that roof blue, and then perhaps I make the wood inside the window orange, 
if I want this to remain white, I have to add the white crayon because this entire project is going to be covered in black paint. And so only the colors we put on will show through. So now I've added that white on there. And when I put the paint on, that will resist. So I've got that going and now I can just continue adding color to my building. And so maybe I'll have a turquoise stripe here. I would recommend doing one building at a time, but I'm gonna add a white stripe here. If you want the windows to look uh, like the lights are on, you might go for a yellowish shade. I think I'm gonna do the rest of these windows with this color. So I'm just gonna add that on, making sure I get rid of most of the white space. And then I'm also gonna go in after I'm done with the windows and finish adding color to the building. All right, I got that one all filled in. I can move on to my next building. You could also go ahead and do a sidewalk or a street down below. You can also be thinking about how you would like your sky. If you would like this to look like a nighttime sky, you could take the white and make stars and you could do a darker blue. If you want a daytime sky, you could make some white clouds and a lighter blue, but you're gonna to wanna to color in your sky and your street or sidewalk and continue coloring in every building, getting rid of almost all the white space so there's enough wax on the paper to resist the paint in that batik style. So we're just gonna keep adding this on top and get all these buildings colored in. Ooh, hands are getting tired from so much coloring, but we have colored in all the buildings, the sky, the doors, the windows, anywhere that is white has white crayon on top of it. I made some of my windows look like they're glowing with light. I made some a little darker. These are white. And I think I've pretty much filled in everything. It's not perfect, but most of the white space has been colored in. So the next step seems crazy. We are gonna smash this paper up. The thing is, since it's a painting paper, it's pretty thick. So if I just try to wad it in a ball, it's gonna be a little difficult. So this is what I do. I roll it and then I start squishing to make some wrinkles. I'm trying my best to not, you know, crumple so hard that I make holes in the paper. So then I might roll it back this way and I'm squishing to try to get more wrinkles into the paper and do my best not to rip it. If we get a hole in it, it'll be okay, but we'd prefer to not get holes. You can see I rip the edge a little bit, that will be okay. I'm going to carefully unroll it. By squishing it up like this, we're giving it more of a cloth-like appearance. I'm also now going to roll it, which is kind of hard because it's thicker, roll it back this way and gently squish it to make more wrinkles in the paper. And again, there's a little tear there, but it's gonna be all right. And kind of smooth it back out. And it's getting nice and wrinkly. I might just try to get a little bit more wrinkling in. I'm squeezy. And I find that when I roll it, it doesn't get as many holes as if I just kind of squished it together. Squeezing, making wrinkles, opening it, and carefully, carefully smoothing it out. The more wrinkles, the more places for the paint to kind of soak in. And so I can see, wow, this paper is getting really wrinkly. I think I'm going to give it one more squish. It's actually getting softer, more like cloth, the more I'm giving it a nice squeeze. All right. Come on, little wrinkles. 
gently opening it back up. Now that's a wrinkly paper. All right. That little piece is not a big deal. Can even put a little piece of tape right there. Perfect. So now when I flip it over, I have a nice wrinkly page and I'm ready for the next step. Okay, I have a larger brush. I have some black uh, watercolor paint and I have a sponge that is dry, it's squeezed out so it's mostly dry. What I'm gonna do now is cover my entire picture with the black paint, everything. That way it goes into the cracks. Then I will take the sponge at the end and wipe off the extra to kind of reveal how the crayon resisted the paint. So it does, you can't see it going in much, but you just have to kind of trust the process and go through the whole page, really go over everything because those cracks we made are going to give it that cloth-like effect. And then we're just helping work this paint into those cracks in between where we put the wax on, which was the crayon. So it's a little different than a cloth resist because it's on paper, but I need to make sure I get every drop of my page. So I'm really kind of working it down section by section, like I did the side, now I'm coming down here to the bottom. Really soak it in there. So we're just making sure we get that black paint everywhere. It's a process. Almost done. So I've got this part and then just the sky. I probably have enough black paint on here. I can just kind of scoot it up with my brush before I wipe the rest of it off. This is already looking really cool because the black really makes those colors pop. Okay. Just kind of massaging this black paint into those cracks with my big brush. I'm not dipping into the paint anymore because you can see there's plenty of paint sitting right on top of this. I'm just kind of scooting it around, helping it soak into those cracks. All right, put my brush in the water so it's out of the way. Take my sponge and I'm just gonna carefully move up on the page to get that extra paint off. My sponge is getting a little full. I might kind of rinse it off. Get that extra off of there. There we go. Wow. And the picture underneath looks so cool. How you can see the crayon is resisting the paint. And there's those beautiful buildings we drew. Oh, that coloring was worth it because we have such a cool looking picture now. All right. Once you have wiped all that extra liquid off, your picture is complete. And once it's dry, you have one amazing boutique building picture. I can't wait to see the one that you create.